the DIY swimming pool powered by the sun. Coming up next, stay tuned. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm excited to show you our swimming pool, which is powered both by solar panels and lithium batteries. I have a uh, playlist that you should check out if you're interested to see how I did the whole project. But today, I want to show you the final results. We've been running our swimming pool off grid here for about six weeks with uh, no issues whatsoever. It's a pretty solid system. I'm really proud of the work and I want to show you it more in detail. Today's a great day because it's partly cloudy, so the sun's out, it's behind clouds. I can give you a really comprehensive overlook to how the system functions, both when it's sunny and when it's cloudy. Just want to mention a few things about solar pool pumps before we get too far into this video. There are two options that most users often go with, either using a renewable energy system like the one I've designed for a shed, or installing a dedicated DC solar pool pump operated directly off solar panels. Both systems have their advantages, but I ended up choosing and designing a small DIY renewable energy system. This system easily powers our pool pump, shed, as well as other items such as tools and devices. The other major advantage to the system is being able to use our current pool pump without having to change any of the plumbing. Dedicated DC powered pool pumps are much more efficient when it comes to energy use but often require installing an additional pool pump when the sun isn't efficient. All in all, I'd much rather use the solar panels in our shed system, not to just power a pool pump but also to use that energy for many other applications in our shed. So here's a closer look at the system. I'll just run through things real quick. Again, you can check out that playlist. You got the battery cabinet. This is insulated right here. And the battery stays between 70 and 80 degrees. So it's almost like perfect and ideal. And over here, we have the load center. I have three circuits. Uh, circuit one is for a dedicated outlet. Uh, circuit two is the pool. And then circuit three is uh, power for the entire shed. This middle box is actually the line for uh, coming from the house, this is a grid assist system, so if we were not to have solar power or things got low enough energy-wise, um, I could draw power from the house. Also have a manual transfer switch. Uh, I get a lot of questions about this switch, and the deal with this is um, I can switch between off-grid and um, line power. So if I want to, say, take the pool and take the entire shed, uh, and put it on grid power because I want to work on the system or I just don't want to be using solar power, something happens, I can just flip it up and uh, you might have saw a flash there. Now I'm running off the house power, but for the most part, for 99% of the time, it stays in down position and it's running off the entire the solar panels and lithium power. We also have uh, MPP, uh, this is an LV2424. It's a great little uh, inverter, 2400 watts. It also has a, a uh, solar charge controller up to 40 amps um, and it works perfect. It uh, provides nice clean power. We really, for the money, I think it was maybe six or seven hundred dollars. You really can't go uh, wrong for this type of money. Now this actually has potential to back feed to the grid, but I don't have it set up that way. So this all runs behind our meter, and uh, it's a way to offset energy. I estimate this saves between $60 and $80 a month. Lastly, we have a, the solar disconnector here. I can shut this off, and now um, there's no power coming in for the, uh, for the panels. I'll turn it back on. Just want to mention one more thing on the MPP, on this LV2424. I have it set for the priority to power all the loads off solar first, and then it charges the batteries. So these are my BYD battery modules, uh, lithium iron phosphate. I picked these up on the secondhand market. I went through battery hookup. I'll leave a coupon link below, affiliate link. Um, if you use that, you save 10% on any order from battery hookup. Great company, great service. And uh, they're always having fantastic deals, whether they're used or new lithium surplus batteries. Pretty inexpensive. I think I paid around $450 per module. Lithium iron phosphate, eight cells each. Uh, each battery originally was rated to uh, about 5.6 kilowatt hours. And uh, of course they've been used and so forth. So I think I'm getting about 10 kilowatt hours out of all three together. 
Um, and again, really solid power. I would love to have new 100% uh, state of charge modules and batteries, but uh, for a shed project and a pool project outside like this, these actually work out really well. So having an insulated battery box is really key, not just for the winter, but for the summer months, keeping these batteries at the right temperature and there's no issues. Now for each BYD battery, I have a monitor which I can look at each cell and look at the overall voltage is 26.2 and all the cells are about 3.27. Here's another module, you can see it's 26.2 roughly, again 3.27. Um, I float the batteries up to about 26.6 volts altogether, and then I can discharge to around 24 volts. So here's a closer look at the MPP LV2424, and uh, the sun is definitely not out right now. It's overcast behind some clouds, and you can see our load is around 730 watts to power the pool pump. And if I go down, you can see our input for the six panels which are on the roof. Uh, they're 320 watts each, but uh, I'm pulling about 300, and, let's say 15 watts total. Uh, again, it's cloudy right now. So a lot of this depends on, if you don't have pure sunlight coming down the panels, it's really about your light conditions. So there's enough light outside, it's not too dark out, where this is still uh, producing some solar power. So 300, 50 watts, 330 watts, whatever it may be. So I'm really only using about 400 watts from the batteries. If I cycle down, you can see I'm pulling about 18 amps to power the loads, which is essentially the pool and a little bit perhaps in the shed. Now when the sun comes out, I'll go ahead and uh, I'll show you what it holds. It's about one o'clock right now. Um, so the sun's fairly overhead and once it pops out of the clouds, uh, we'll have some pretty good for your power. You can see the overall voltage, uh, 25.9. And again, I've been running this for six weeks. So on a really good sunny day, if I end the day at 26.3, it's a pretty good day. On a partially cloudy or cloudy day, I'm usually in the mid 25s. And uh, if it's cloudy for a couple days, I may be in the 24 range. I would estimate we have between one to three days of standby power. Again, it all depends on light conditions if it's not direct sun on the panels and how bright it is outside. I'll just flip you through a couple more of these screens. You can see the pool pump itself takes about uh, a third of the uh, inverter for power. So 33% of the load right now is from the pool pump, which is really the only thing that is running and so forth. So power hurts and the load. And you can see we're making about 330 watts roughly. I will film this again once we have some good sun. But again, I wanna show you the good, bad, and ugly here. Most people would only show you what happens on a sunny day, but for us, sun, no sun, we still have power. I'm getting some good power now. Putting 34 amps into the batteries. All right, you can see right now we're making, this is actually a record, I've never seen it this high, 1.9, is that 1.9 kilowatt hours from solar. Now it's a little bit less because of the clouds, but wow. So it really kicks in when uh, you have both the time of day, being close to solar noon, as well as having the right light conditions. Just looking at the balance of the system, we have a battery switch for each module as well as some custom bus bars and then a master fuse and a switch for the DC negative side. Now running that pool pump, one horsepower draws about 730 watts. So when you're designing a system like this, you have to make sure you have capacity to run that pool pump, whether it be 10, 11, 12 hours a day. Running a motor is a pretty substantial device, especially when you first turn it on. It takes a lot more power to get it going. Now the MPP has a setting, it's actually setting number six. It allows you to draw a little bit of grid power to help turn on those big loads. As you can see here, you have two options, enable or disabled. If it's disabled, then the inverter would not use grid power to help turn on those large loads, such as motors. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at inrush current. Now, I don't have a meter, but I do have a sense energy system connected to our home. And I have the app opened up. 
you can see the house is pulling roughly around 580 watts. And when I go ahead and turn on the pool, you'll see the inrush current. The pool is running off grid. So it bounced up to just about 3000 watts and now it's hanging around 1300 and it's going under or back to the original 580, it looks like 550 now. And the motor is showing 730 watts, roughly what it was showing yesterday when I filmed. Now the motor is still showing up, uh, either because there's an error in the app or it's because I have the neutrals connected at that manual transfer switch so it's still seeing the motor run. Let me reopen the app. I think it was an error in the app, it just didn't turn off. But again, that shows the inrush current. It takes a lot more power to turn on a motor for a few seconds. And with setting number six in the LV2420, it's possible. The other option would be to create some kind of soft start. Either I can buy one or I can make one, but right now I'll probably keep it with the LV2424. I'd like to know what you guys think about that. Should I keep the current set up? Or should I have a dedicated soft start for this motor? Let me know in your comments below. All right, guys, thanks for watching this video. I really appreciate you checking out our renewable energy system that powers our swimming pool. Please be sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. Let me know what you think of our system. I'm really happy with the results of our project, and uh, I'm hoping that my results would be helpful in your plans for whatever you're looking to do in the future. Thanks for watching, and take care.